can we talk about Marissa Tomei for a moment? Yeah. Because she's just sensational always, but she really seemed to to um, embody a lot of what makes Arabic women very very beautiful and very strong. Yeah. Yeah. And I I wanted to, I wanted to know. I mean, she did this little hand gesture, which yes. So so tell me about kind of creating you know that cultural perspective around yes. her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, and you will understand this, but I think uh, one of the things I really wanted to do was the thing about Syrian women is that they're not like other Arab women in the Middle East. Syrian women are, it, Syria is a very secular country, so it's not an Islamic state. Women um, have a, a little bit more rights than they do elsewhere in the Middle, in the Middle East. And so, you know, there's education, there's uh, freedom of dress, of you know, so I think for me that was really important. And Syrian women are also, you know, every time I travel in the Middle East, it, there's this um, reputation that precedes it, that they're known to be feisty and opinionated and um, they're, they're, they're not subordinate to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so when I met, I met Marissa a few years ago, fleeingly at a, at a party, and I just, I, she had such a presence and she had such a quiet strength about her and vulnerability that I and and she did something with her hands and I was like you're so like she it's a Mediterranean thing Italians Arabs we talk with our hands yeah. so the the thing is is that she um, she had that and so when when it was time when I had a script that I could show her I we sent her the script and she loved it and and so then what she's a method actor and so what we did was sh uh, she went to Beirut for three weeks and she became an Arab woman mm -hmm. and uh, the dress the hair the accent the Arabic yeah. I recorded my mother on a tape for her mm -hmm. and she just memorized that and so and then it's very hard to find Syrians in my experience, it's impossible finding Syrians in Canada, let alone in Johannesburg. So I found her the one Syrian woman in all of South Africa. <laughs> and she just, she's like an authentic Syrian woman, this beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And so she just mimicked her, mimicked her. Like she just, it was wild. Now this film is, I mean, unbelievably timely right now. Yeah. Um, how would you like audiences to connect with it, considering the political situation in Syria right now? I think for me, because I, I have been writing this for the last six years, yeah. and so I have been jumping up and down trying to convince everybody, anybody who would listen, what Syria was like. And so many times I was met with blank stares of where is Damascus anyway on a map? Is it in Europe? And so <laughs> it's only been the last year and a half that everyone's like, hey, wow, you're right. So for me, it was really important to situate the story in January 2011 before prior to the Arab Spring, mm -hmm. because I, there's no way I could keep up with what's happening there now. And my personal experiences of Syria does not include a civil war and does not include the Arab Spring. So for me, the best thing I could do was, if I situated it before the Arab Spring, I could provide uh, context as to what's happening there now. What, what do you love about this movie? Oh, um, <laughs> I just think the, the pace I think the expectations are played. River plays with your expectations, and um, there's a whole set of kind of wrong-footed. This is what you think you're going to get from an action. You know, you look at this poster here, and you've got this guy holding a gun, <laughs> shooting everybody in the world, and that's not really what you're going to get. But you might, and then and and that that I really enjoyed the unexpected nature and the, and, and the time and that she gives to the characters to. Um, explain themselves really. So I really love that and how she confounds our expectations. I think this, uh, I think people are going to find that really, really interesting. Yeah. So I'm calling this a George Clooney movie. Oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, because it's political and it's beautiful and it's epic. <laughs> wow. So did you have that intent or is that just an exciting <laughs> new, new discovery? <laughs> For me it was a really simple story of this man and so uh, when I see I knew I wouldn't have had a movie with Alexander and I wasn't actually interested in making the movie without him so for me I feel like his performance is epic 
and so I feel like I could just send this movie out into the world and I'm fine. I, I, I know I, I, people don't believe me when I say this, but I don't feel like I need to make another movie after this. So I feel, I, honestly, but I But you're feel, not going to stop, though. It's so brutal. Shh, shh don't okay. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I adore you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Thank you. Like, oh, no, is, no, don't, because you're going to make me cry. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that, like, you just kind of knocked the wind out of me oh. by what you just said. So thank you so much for getting my movie, because it's my little baby, and it just means a lot to me. Find my...